Lane pushed us back to the Andrews lease. We're just rolling up here and Nick's dad actually shot a bird this morning. So we're gonna hunt here for a day or two till this rain pushes through and then we'll be back on the public land. But there's the bird right there. Dana's got him laid out. I think he got some footage of it too. So we'll get the story from him and we'll probably get a field here. We thought we were gonna get a bird. <laughs> really? Yeah. Right. How's it going? Ted? We're at nice great yeah, he was facing me. Yeah. You mashed him? I mashed him. <laughs> No, 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 not after yesterday. No, <laughs> gotta have those days though to make those that much more special. Uh -huh. And then it's got a little extra on there. Forty-two and a half. Mmm, that's the first one I've ever measured. About average, I'd say. Forty-eight is. Uh huh. But I don't know for reals. I mean, we're pretty far south. Yeah, clean shaven. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Almost didn't recognize you there. Yeah. <laughs> nice Thanks. to meet you. Nice right. to meet you. Is that your bird in the back? That's it. Awesome, man. Congrats. Thank you. Oh, yeah. All right, so it's been several days since you last saw us. We were access deer hunting there, and we said we were going to be hunting public, and we did for, well, just really one morning. Yeah, one morning. And then some bad weather moved into that area, and it looks like it's going to be a wash here for a little while, so we decided to just pull up camp and head to Nick's, back to Nick's deer lease instead. Yep. Place that we're hunting, there's a road system that runs parallel to this creek along the whole property. So we kind of, our plan was to get up above that road system and hopefully the birds would get pushed up away from that road, but they're all roosted right above it. Yeah. We were having people drive right underneath turkeys that were roosted, you know, 20 yards off the road and they clammed up by about nine o'clock and I don't think we heard another turkey gobble the rest of the no, day. So. We, but I think it's a good little reset, but I'm actually excited to do it. Y'all get to hunt here where uh -huh. I've hunted my entire life. Yeah. So other than just walking around looking at them, now we get to actually go chase them. Mm -hmm. They so. were losing their minds the other day while we were here. We learned, I guess, since him and I haven't hunted reels before, it seems like they're similar to Miriam's in the fact that they'll just, like once they get down, they are going somewhere else. Yep. And yep. I guess so they'll probably come a lot further to a call too. So Yeah, I feel like they do. I mean, it's a lot more open than like Mississippi is. You can tell behind me, it's just rolling hills. You know, be big mesquite flats and they'll roll into a creek bottom where you have a lot of post oaks and live oaks and then a lot of cedar thickets mixed into that, but it's just a lot more open country. You can hear them a lot further. And I think that's a lot of the reason why they hit the ground and they just kind of take off. They get up in these big flats and hang out, but they like to spend the majority of their day in those creek bottoms. And so it seems like they'll just kind of roam from you know, bottom to bottom and just make a big loop, you know, four or five miles a day, I guess. Yeah, that's the nice thing is they seem to like gobble, like to gobble a lot more here than they did in Mississippi. So <laughs> I think we'll be able to find one here even this afternoon yet. We're excited to be hunting out in this Texas country. Uh, I've never hunted Rio's before. This is my first time hunting them. I think it's the same for Jake too, so. We're excited to be on the lease too. I think I think his dad's more excited. It's pretty sweet that they're letting us hunt out here, but. Yeah, oh yeah, he's gonna be texting me probably every 30, 45 minutes while he's driving home wondering if we're hearing anything or not. <laughs> Ready? How are we attacking this place? So this road right here parallels the property line all the way back around to that far corner where we saw those birds the other evening. Mm -hmm. We can just take this road and you're never more than four or five hundred yards from this property line and they like to bounce around between the road and that property line. So I figure we'll just kind of ease this road and then that way we can use terrain if we strike one. We can move around if we have to. I think we can just take this road and we'll just go, you know, like we have been every 60, 70 yards, hit a call, see what happens. But we're just going to go another 150 yards and get up on top of this little knob and call and see. Might even just get up there and hit a crow call. And, maybe get lucky and he'll gobble and then be able to make a play. There's a hill right up here where I went when tried to get one to gobble the other evening. Y'all stay in the truck. Mm -hmm. That's that hill. And they like to run that fence and go to that other bottom that's over there. And they come off that side of the property and they could be anywhere down in there. Yeah, I'd rather strike them here than back up there. over and come get on top of this hill. This is where we were by them blue bonnets the other day and we heard them gobble mm -hmm. from in the truck. Yep. This is where we were when we struck them the first day. And this is where they, all those were roosted this morning. 
Let's confirm it and make sure I'm not hearing things, but I'm pretty sure I just heard it there again. Yep. No, no, two one, 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 two. The wind's blowing from us to them, too. I think we just need to drop right down here a little bit. They're following us up. That's all I've been, been calling enough for you to be. I thought you were just gonna walk us out here and get us on too quick. <laughs> I did too for a second. I'm glad. I'm glad Greg heard him. We we're just walking along. Greg come up. And he said, "I'm pretty sure I heard a turkey gobble when y'all were walking back there." And then he said, "Yep, there he was right there." And I didn't hear it that time either. And I hit a crow call for sure. Heard him that time. Uh -huh. After that, every time I crowed, I heard him. Yeah. But I haven't heard him answer a call yet. But, but I think what we're gonna do is just ease back up this road a little bit and get back on top of that bluff where we originally heard them from call from there like we planned to if we get them to gobble good you know readjust at that point depending on where they're at and if they don't then we'll just keep on moving with the plan we got yeah. it seems to be working to this point a lot of blue pins ahead a lot of blue pins didn't take very long <laughs> Sir. Mm -mm. That's about as good as you gonna be. Yeah. All right, so we just got done messing with those birds that we got on right out of the truck. A little bonus quest. So, anyways, we're back on our normal plan. And we're headed back to the back of the property where a bunch of birds were roosted this morning. Per the intel we've got from my dad and another buddy of ours that hunts out here. So, we're just gonna keep slowly picking our way, calling. I still think we're probably four or five hundred yards from where. We could potentially strike one, but turkey tracks right there. Well, okay, anywhere in here it could happen. So that's the plan. There's a big ridge up here we're gonna go get on top of, and they were roosted down below it this morning. So I'm thinking that there might be some hanging around there. Nice. Congrats, good beauty. Thanks, man. It looks a lot like wow. a deer I killed. Might be cousins. I have to go back and look at pictures, just like this. Penetrated through my boot and was sticking in my toe. <laughs> Not one of those things I felt like I could just grit out and just keep going. <laughs> <laughs> like I had, a, well, sandburrs, I got sandburrs in my knee. I was like, that's no problem. This was like a cactus spine that broke off in my toe. I just pulled it out. <laughs> The merrills yeah. aren't the like, merrills aren't cactus proof. Apparently, then? they're not cactus proof. <laughs> Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah. got it on video too. I'll play it back if you need me to. April Fool's. It's not even April first. April Fool's. Right now you don't know. I'll never know. We'll be up here in a minute. I didn't hear it. 
Well, if they did gobble, then what do you want to do? I don't know. You're the one that's been hunting here 20 years. <laughs> no, they definitely two of them gobbled right down here. Yeah, loud and clear. 150 yards, maybe. 200. Yeah. I guess they've all been further than I think. Yeah. I bet they're, yeah. They're in the sound exactly like when we were sitting up here pretty much the other day. We just sat down here for what? 15 minutes? Maybe. Except I see a little snack. I've just been following his lead. I mean, he's hunted here for 20 years, so he said the birds like to come and basically move through theirs and roost on the neighbors, but you can intercept them a lot afternoon, so that's what we're about to try to do. <laughs> Two of them gobbling down there. Let's get up here. I think we can make a pretty big move and get down here and after all.
see him. You know, if I could see him, you could see him. Let's go. <laughs> Thank you, buddy. Thank you, Dana. I didn't think that joker was ever gonna come out. <laughs> he was just right on the other side of that bush the whole time. Yeah. How long did you see him before you shot him? A minute, maybe. Yeah. Stand there strutting. Perfect. <laughs> all the was gonna come right to us behind all this stuff. You know what we'll be able to do with this golden hour? Slip up into them blue bonnets and get a picture. <laughs> it's so hot. You're like, you're so red right now. Oh, yeah. I'm sweating. Just drenched in sweat. They all, just got me again. We're all packed like hot dogs against the same tree. Should we go check him out? Yeah. Let's go get him and slip up in there. Your first real grand. No spurs. No spurs, what? That's cooler than having long spurs. I've never seen oh, he's that. Oh, he's got little head on that thing. <laughs> I've never seen it. It's a giant. Like that. That's a giant head right there. Little Jake spurs on. <laughs> Don't think he was drumming behind that stuff for the yeah, longest time. You could tell he was like probably about within gun range for about yeah. five minutes. He had to be standing right behind that cedar for about, I don't know, five minutes. It sounded like maybe at one point he was going towards them and then he started working back this way. 6.45 yeah. or so, we were sitting up there, heard the first gobble. I mean, we did strike those birds early in the afternoon, like three o'clock, and yeah. it was bad hot. Mm -hmm. And that might have been the reason they were staying down in there, right. who knows. But you could tell, I mean, it started cooling off, the sun started. And even this group, this wad of turkeys that's gobbling right now, they were hearing us for a while calling. They yeah. didn't answer us, but then as it's getting later here and cooling down, they're just, I mean, they're gobbling all on their own. Head. It's just I mean, a lunker. <laughs> I said, oh, he's going to continue to gobble right there? All right. <laughs> I probably had a better angle at him than I did, honestly. It was probably like a clear shot. I know, but we, I mean, we were just using the two of us to our advantage, I guess, and having our bases covered, because who knows which side of the bush he was gonna come around. You know, or, like, those started closing the distance at the very end, it seemed yeah. like, too. Yeah, I, I think we were probably both thinking the same thing when I shot him, too, because he, like, it made, it made him go like this. He didn't, like, it wasn't like one of these, because yeah. he was like, I think he was like this, but he was facing right at us. The tiny gobble, I'm pretty sure he was facing right at us. With the it was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I think you should talk about how, basically, you got, this is, your turkey, one of your turkeys that you you were going to shoot off the lease yeah. this year. You guys yeah, all each, have a set number. Each lease member gets uh, two turkeys per membership. You know, we've struggled the last few years getting our numbers back up after ultimately killing too many a few years ago. So we just really try to regulate now who's like how many you're going to kill. Yeah. I don't. I'm not worried about killing a turkey yeah. here. And it's just and it's nice to be able to bring somebody down here to the place I grew up turkey hunting. Yeah. And let somebody else kill one. Yeah. And I mean, I, think, I was thinking about it. Now. It's like growing up, you always. I mean, what was on like the outdoor channels, all like basically western stuff and Texas whitetail hunting is what I saw a lot of. It's just like I never thought I'd be in Texas doing any sort of hunting, yeah. <laughs> or out west doing any sort of hunting. So <laughs> pretty sweet to be down here. How about you guys? Yeah, we heard several. One that Nick said is in a good spot. On your property? <clears throat> it's right on the edge. Good, good. Now you have to feel obligated to come up and hunt Wisconsin, if you didn't already before. We're gonna look into, the, we're gonna look into saying if we make that happen. I don't know, but Lump will definitely gonna look into it for sure. Good deal. But he said he owes you one. Nah, nah, he don't owe me nothing. Oh, oh yeah. All right, buckle up. The Texans got a story to tell. When we departed camp, we uh, parked at the window. Ooh, I taste that cilantro on there already. Yeah. Uh-huh. Good. Must be. Yeah. All right, so we just got done cooking up some fajita meat from the leftover axis we had from the other day, and we took the turkey tenderloins and threw it in there as well, just to why not. Mm -hmm. It's fresh. Jake brought it to me, so we threw it on there. But uh, Jake killed that bird this evening. It was like, like 7 o'clock, 6.50, something like that. Mm -hmm. We got that done, and birds are still gobbling all over us. And me and Ted took off and went and roosted one for tomorrow morning. The plan is to get up and get in there early and see if we can't kill one right off the bat. We don't know if it'll go that way or not, but I think we got a pretty good idea where this bird is. So. He said that you said, in, when they're roosted in that spot, if you're gonna kill them, you're probably gonna kill them pretty early? Yep, seems to be. I don't know. I've been wrong a lot before, so I could be wrong tomorrow. 
Not today. Not today. No, not today. No, today it works like it, at least. Got some Axis deer and turkey in a little fajita wrap here, courtesy of the chef. So we're gonna eat and go to sleep and then get up in the morning and go chase this other bird. See you in the morning.